Promoting sustainable urbanization is an important policy issue around the world. But it takes different shapes in different countries. In the Chinese context, it's generally known under the heading of eco-city development or even eco-city construction. As in much of the developing world, the process of people migrating to the cities is in full process. Eco-city development in China therefore means the construction of clean and green new towns rather than the retrofitting of already existing neighborhoods. These can normally have any of the features generally associated with eco-cities elsewhere in the world, but they also breathe the air of modern, comfortable, upper-middle-class life. The number of Chinese nationally recognized eco-cities runs in the hundreds. This is by far the highest number in the world. Apart from that, China also has similar programs for low-carbon cities, low-carbon eco-cities, garden eco-cities, spawn cities, knowledge cities, smart cities, and a couple more. Now, in 2011, in the Scientific American, Richard Register, the father of the eco-city concept, said he believed that the future of sustainable urbanization can be found in China and not in the USA, which counts no eco-cities at all. The question is, how will these Chinese eco-cities and their similar name fellows truly work? This picture illustrates the way sustainable urbanization takes shapes in Chinese cities. A first key element to consider is that environmental preservation and carbon emission reduction have definitely risen in importance. However, they should not go at the expense of, expense of economic growth. In other words, there is no trade-off between them. Both are considered essential developmental requirements. This implies a strong belief in ecological modernization. More value added, generated at lower consumption of resources and less harmful emissions. Sustainable development in China involves a drive for production and consumption practices in which green, clean, smart and high technologies take the lead. In the more prosperous and successful cities on China's east coast, for example, polluting manufacturers move out of the cities into the inlands, where labor costs are much lower. As we can see in this picture, the new science and technology plaques quickly take their place. These are filled with offices, laboratories and residential areas for young urban professionals pursuing higher and especially cleaner quality of life. Dirt out clean in. A second aspect of sustainable urbanization in China is that ambitions are high and the scale of these changes is massive. Anyone taking the high-speed train from Hong Kong to Guangzhou or from Shanghai to Nanjing must have noticed that skyscrapers are everywhere. Municipal governments expropriate rural land, prepare it for construction and then lease it to developers. This is a large industry making a phenomenal contribution to China's annual GDP growth. And smart, sustainable and low carbon development are paramount to success in these markets. A third very interesting aspect is that eco-city development is embedded in a multi-level governance structure where different players have different stakes. Different national ministries are responsible for different sustainable urbanization programs. The Ministry of Environmental Protection runs the Eco-City program and various city cities have registered for this. The National Development and Reform Committee looks after the Low Carbon City program and it has embraced a host of other cities. And finally, the Ministry of Housing and Urban and Rural Development monitors the cities that have registered as smart cities. These ministries are in partial competition with each other, but they have in common that they monitor improvements in sustainability through complicated indicator systems. Municipal governments, on the other hand, cover half of their urban expenditure with revenue generated from urban expansion. They cannot survive without leasing land to project developers. And then finally, developers, some of them public owned and many of them super large, have an interest in promoting green neighborhoods for high income groups. They brand their residential projects as eco and their industrial ones as high-tech. High-quality subway systems and high-tech gadgets demonstrating eco-friendliness 
tend to be part and parcel of the packages agreed between governments and developers. But then what about citizens and civil groups? Don't they have any role to play in sustainable urbanization in China? It would be too much of a cliché to say that civil society is absent. But it is true that civil groups would be well advised to stay out of politically sensitive topics. Spotting environmental problems is fine, but demanding administrative action is already contentious. The government encourages citizens to help implement policies they have already agreed on. But citizens' influence on the decision-making phase is limited. In fact, one could say that the Chinese urban citizen is most of all a residential consumer, hoping for a healthy and clean environment with excellent schools and hospitals. Any sustainability transition in Chinese cities consequently plays out in a context of relatively strong governmental orchestration and limited space for public participation.